Hi, and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. Okay, this is Mailbag, a uh, common feature of the channel. It's where I attempt to answer questions that you guys have left on the channel, or if I can't answer them, I have a good go at answering them, or I throw them out to the wider tubing community to try and answer on behalf of somebody who's raised the question. Now, we'll get into this mailbag. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next question or comment comes from The Death Beats, um, aka Gary. And uh, da, da, da. this was in response to MX1 powering question, Unison detune video I did in August 2021. And uh, Gary writes, I've always wondered what Roland's opinion of the USB splitter solution is. Back when I first got into working, I posted some videos on Instagram and a number of folks from Roland US that I know via social media liked the video, but they were silent in regards to comments. I'm guessing they first designed the MX1, they simply didn't bear in mind the expansion would be required for the whole boutique uh, collection that overtook the area collection. Um, and you hit the nail right on the head. It wasn't envisaged when they designed the MX1 the, uh, what the boutiques were going to do. Um, I think this was really a case of one development team not talking to another development team. That's what I really think, um, that they basically cocked up. Uh, the concept of the MX1 I thought was really good. I really liked it. I bought into the concept of the MX1 because I bought one. Um, but they didn't take into account the boutiques and subsequent synth releases. Uh, many like me you know, bought the MX-1 as a hub. I and mean, the whole idea of the MX-1 for me was to effectively as a hub to run a lot of this ARIA equipment as a submixer. Um, and it would glue it all together. But Roland quickly outgrew the four USB ports. Uh, they didn't give you power on the USB ports and the boutiques require power down the USB socket because um, you can't run it on batteries. That's just bonkers. I keep saying it's bonkers. So Roland, why don't you listen? Uh, and the funniest thing about this is the new... Uh, the JX08 and JD08 uh, boutiques still have a stupid speaker and still have batteries. Come on, Roland, when are you gonna actually learn that this is not a professional way of uh, delivering an instrument? <clears throat> um, I'm surprised the MX1 replacement has not arrived, I have to be honest, assuming that all USB development on new instruments has followed a set of basic principles. Um, this should not be a difficult platform. I imagine a st I, I imagine a stereo uh, MX2 with at least 20 channels and at least 10 channels that are dedicated to USB to meet the demand of all the boutiques you keep pushing out. Um, of course, the problem with that is you'll have to give the MX1A or the MX2 a proper power supply because a power supply of a uh, thousand milliamps just ain't going to cut the mustard. Next question or comment comes from Diego de la Cruz. And this is in response to um, the Roland MX1 USB ports explained video I did in January 2019. And Diego writes, thanks a lot. Really appreciate your videos. Just wondering if you could clear something up for me though. Once you utilize one of the USB ports with a piece of ARIA gear, are you still able to use the other three USB uh, channels on the mixer for additional tracks in Ableton? Have you tried this, or do you uh, do the other three USB channels get locked for exclusive use with other pieces of rolling gear? I found that a lot of conflict in documentation pertaining to this, so I'm hoping someone with the actual mixer can verify it for me. What is the truth? Thanks again for your time. I think this is really confusing and I think where the confusion comes is the modes that the MX-1 operates in. Anyway, I responded along the lines of the Roland MX-1 acts as a USB hub with regards to both MIDI and audio for other Roland ARIA gear. Um, 
with a few, and also with a few selected Roland synths. So you can plug in a JDXI and a, a Jupiter 50 and Jupiter 80 into the into the mixer as well, and it will transmit data. Um, but you cannot plug and play other manufacturers' synths on the MX-1. It, it doesn't play nicely. They may work, they may not work, but the reality is, assume they don't. Um, remember, the other thing is, only one of these ports is powered. The other three are effectively unpowered ports, so you need to power the equipment separately. So you can only use a boutique on one, on one of these ports, unless you start using splitter cables. And I keep promising to do a video on splitter cables, and I haven't got there yet. Um, anyway, so I, I I sent that back, and then there was a there was a follow on here, and um, uh, Diego wrote, "Sure, I get that. Let me explain my question a little better. I currently own a Roland MX1, but do not own any other Roland gear that would be compatible with the USB ports on the mixer. I currently use the four USB channels on the mixer to control four additional tracks in Ableton Live." However, I do plan on buying one of the boutique devices to utilize one of the USB ports on the mixer. Um, but I don't want to do that. It means I use the ability to use channels USB 2, 3, uh, two, three and 4 to control tracks, uh, plugins in Ableton Live. Um, ah, my understanding has increased. As far as I've been able to tell, the MX-1 cannot operate in dual, mo dual mode. So you either operate it as a, as a surface or you operate it as in external mode and therefore you can uh, use the other devices. Um, and I haven't really tried it. I have to be honest in trying to, trying to operate it in dual mode. Um, but if you have it in the mode where it's able to receive sound information from the USB ports fader, uh, we'll be looking at the USB ports. So, um, you'll not be able to have some faders control enabled and other pay, others the USB ports. Um, it kind of, the modal mapping doesn't work. Um, so then Diego wrote back to me and said, thank you very much for clarifying. I wish I'd known this before I bought it. Kind of uh, Phil Rowland lied to me. A lot of people feel that and they don't didn't really lie to you. They just didn't tell everybody the truth. Um, and I, I kind of make that distinction on purpose because they didn't lie. Um, They definitely didn't advertise you can't use the USB ports from one or more pieces of compatible USB uh, Roland gear uh, and use the rest of the USB channels to run tracks in Ableton. No, and again, this is to do with the modal, the way you set the MX-1 up. So mo the MX-1 has three modes on it. Okay, It has mixer mode, which doesn't have any relation to the computer at all. It's just a mixer. It has external mode that interfaces with the computer, but is primarily for... in. Um, instruments coming in and then it has uh, a surface mode that allows it to be operate as a control for your door um, and I've never been able to go on surface mode I have to be honest I've said it many times I think it's completely pointless so the MX-1 as a surface is I don't think is the right thing you can buy better devices to do that um, anyway he goes on to say don't get me wrong it's a fun piece of rolling gear Definitely messed up with those USB ports though. And I agree, and where is the MX2, Roland? 